This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. All of you uh, mostly Pittsburghers out there in the greater area uh, and to technology and everything. And a lot of fans on the West Coast. Actually, um, uh, producer Missy, I don't know if she's popped in yet because I understand it's Taco Tuesday and it's three hours ago where she's at right now, but uh, she's in the process of opening Sorgatron Media West uh, out in California, dodging forest fires. Um, but uh, <laughs> so so that's what's happening. So if, you, if, if things are a little weird, uh, we're not entirely under a leash this week. Uh, but with us, well, she was on a plane last week, so it was all it was all all over the place. Oh wait, no, we weren't here last week. That's right. We weren't here. That's last right. Week. There was a, there's an election thing going on. That is John Chichilla. He's at Chilla on the Twitter. He's the um, gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. I was actually thinking because I was running late tonight. I was actually thinking, why don't you? I almost said, just hang, bring me in via Hangouts, and I'll I'll, I'll be on the train until until I actually oh, I'm walk sure that'll into work the out studio. Amazing. Hey, we what is that try guy? That sometime. What is that? What is that uh, guy next to you think of Apple iPhones? <laughs> you know, can you can you go, go, just tap him on the shoulder and be like, hi? What do you what do you think about AR Clips app? Um, <laughs> I'd be like the feet on the street. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Listen, I'm here. Yeah, we did that. We we were doing the uh, the the. Uh, Halloween night and trick or treat thing, and I actually um, uh, Google videoed, or did I, or whatever I used, yeah, I Google video called to a friend down at the trunk or treat down the down the street, and we did a live report. <laughs> I'm using quotation marks. <laughs> we did a live report. We almost did that election night as well, but it didn't work out. We're trying to get somebody from Florida uh, to talk about what's going on down there. Anyways, this is the awesome cast. We do tech no- talk technology, but we got some business to get to. First of all, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com at Sorg- at awesomecast and Facebook us uh, the awesome pa- awesome cast page and group uh, where there's a lot of great discussion happening on the awesome cast group and the awesome cast page is where this live stream lives um, and so much more. Also, please. Uh, subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and video or video versions on that Facebook or the YouTube page. If we're not on your platform, let us know and we'll get over there. And of course, uh, we are uh, live every Tuesday here on Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thanks to our streaming partners helping to get the awesome cast out there at riversedgepgh.com. Uh, as w- that they carry us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. and the 405media.com that are carrying us weekdays at 9 a- 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time, five days a week. And uh, if you want to be part of the studio audience or you want to uh, be part of the advertising on the show, start getting your message out there into the awesome cast audience. Audience, uh, hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and producer Missy, no matter what time zone she's in. We'll help you with that. If you want to support us directly, if you're getting value out of the show, hit up patreon.com slash awesomecast. And thank you to our great supporters uh, at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore, uh, where we talk about um, social Pokemon Go anxiety, I think, a little bit. When it comes to gifting uh, that Chilla was having, uh, and also our friend at the uh, fan of the show, Dollar Love, our longest supporter on here on the show, Michael Fedor, uh, over there as well. Again, patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys are literally helping us keep the lights on here. So let's get into uh, the awesome thing of the week. And I guess uh, I know it doesn't look like it if you're looking at this on the, on the doc, Chilla, but I'm going to consider this an awesome thing. Um, Bear with me. Stan Lee passed uh, this uh, past Monday at 95 years old. Um, And I'm, you know, kind of celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. Stan Lee, one, he made it to 95. God bless him. Uh, Two, he, he... 
he passed on Veterans Day, and he's somebody who did serve in the army mm-hmm. before becoming part of what would become Marvel Comics. And also, you know, and whatever you think, of course, there's the controversy about creative rights and things like that. But either way, it's undeniable that he has had a hand in some of the most recognizable characters that are, you know, again, um, being put in front of new generations these days. And I, I had this thought of he's kind of he, he's kind of a Walt Disney which is appropriate since they're now a Disney property, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely put him up there. And he, I mean, I think generations to come will see and appreciate his work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at least like, you know, the the product of it and the evolution of it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, reading reading a Stan Lee Spider-Man is a little different than reading a a today's Spider-Man or a uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man or this Into the Spider-Verse that's going to be coming out. Oh, that's this month, this next Or month. that little pig Spider-Man. Or that little pig pig Spider-Man. No, I think that was all Stan Lee. Uh, that would be Spider-Ham, Peter Porker. Spider-Ham. Okay, Peter Porker. <laughs> I do have one issue of that <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere lying around. I was thinking about it. I might get my comic books out sometime. Um, but anyways... Uh, <laughs> But no, I I think I think it's uh, really awesome to kind of recognize like somebody that's had that much influence on things, you know, over the years. And, and you know, we all say you know somebody that really kind of um, influenced a lot of our childhoods, right? I mean, there's there was the, somebody was talking about um, like somebody that cosplayed at their work like almost every day at, 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 as Spider Man, um, you know, like like stuff like that. Um, it, it's 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 you know inspirational the way that they do their superheroes over marvel i think more than them just being you know gods and things which i think dc's seeing a problem with these days right um so uh no i think i think my awesome thing is to celebrate stan lee right definitely did you see the app store no gave a shout like there if you go to the today screen in the apple app store Mm -hmm. there's a whole section on remembering stan lee yeah, there Which is. I thought was very nice. Right there, there is a remembering Stan Lee. Uh, I mean, they do. I, I've seen this a bit. I've seen some WWE stuff in here. Um, generally on the App Store, like there, you know, there's a Thanksgiving one. Like there's more editorial content going on here, like articles and things that maybe quasi lead to an app download. Yeah. the The interesting thing about that is, and I don't want to detract from the the Stan Lee commentary, but the interesting thing about that is a lot of the times I get those types of there's a lot of information about hey did you know this app can do this this and this too yeah, or yeah do yeah. you want to take pictures of light trails like with a with a slow shutter setting kind of thing and it's interesting like i learn new things about apps i already have mm-hmm. so i don't know if it curates half based on apps you don't own and half based on apps you do but I've had a very good time just going through there periodically and, and learning things that I didn't know about the applications that I already have. Oh, that's good. I, I end up, I don't go into that enough. But when mm-hmm. I do, I, I find myself surprised. I kind of wish it would populate into the news app that a little bit. Super cool. Right? So, but yeah, and, and they don't do something like this on like the, the uh, Mac store. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is. Um, I, I like I do like how they have this laid out because there's a little bit about him and how he was really important and then there, there's different sections there's read and draw and where they kind of talk about let's see he also inspired us to create our own uh, create on our own whether by drawing coloring or making your own photos look like panels from a graphic novel so there's there's apps like Comixology and Marvel Unlimited and but there's also Marvel Color Your Own app and there's one called Aldi by Tin Rocket which I think it's just an animation app of some sort. As well, it's like a dollar ninety nine app where you can work on some animations on there. It's pretty cool. I kind of want to get that app now. And then there's like the playing the games and and then there's Act and Learn with Sandbox and Apple Books. So I mean, it, that's kind of cool. It's not just like just hawking Marvel stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like it really is a thoughtful. Hey, this is what this guy means, and this is what you should take from it. So I think that's pretty cool. Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So, I got the new iPad, and I have actually oh, is that it? Very there? much Wait, so been enjoying it. It's on. Is that it in your in it, your? It's, it's hiding. It's, it's hiding behind. Is, the, is the it there in behind tablet. the surface in your grubby little hands? Yes. <laughs> um, I have been enjoying it for for a few days here. I will say, the ProMotion display, mm-hmm. like the 120 hertz refresh rate, is 
phenomenal along with the speed of the device. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I've, I surprised myself. I haven't gotten any false taps based on. Because again, uh, we'll turn that around there. If we're the, you know, look at the bevel. Uh, wow. I, that is a lot less. And, and mind, mind you, I'm still playing with like the, the iPad 3 that has, has like a mile of bevel in comparison there. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I haven't had any problems with like accidental taps or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I wish the pencil, and it does. Let me see if I can get a. The click. Um, I wish it. The magnet was a little bit stronger. Others might find it annoying, but it's pretty. It, it snaps pretty well into place. But I do wish it was a little bit tighter. Um, I really like that it, it induction charges. But I'm hoping that someone makes some kind of like pencil stand for your desk where I can put it on that to charge instead of always having to have it clipped onto the side of the iPad. Okay. Um, like, I feel like it's going to, I mean, how strong is that? I feel like that's something that's going to get knocked off at some I, point, I right? Mean, you're not going to okay, be able you, to lift the iPad with it. That looks pretty stiff. But I will yeah. say, like, here's me flicking it. Yeah. It's not going real far. <laughs> and, and the one, the, here's how I tested it. There was even, I love that there's like, a, it seemed like a tactile sound. So I'm hoping that helps you guys on the audio podcast. <laughs> I've actually, with it clung to the side of the, the ipad uh-huh i've actually been inserting it in my bag like this that's vertically to um, see yeah to see if it's gonna push off and it surprisingly hasn't like, so you're taking it in and out of my bag you're sliding it down like a like a book yeah yeah at that point okay um but it, yeah it hasn't it hasn't fallen off in my bag hmm. the one thing that and i'm sure everyone likes the sleekness of the new folio cover mm-hmm I'd like to put stickers on this, and I have a feeling they're not going to cling. The other thing huh. that I don't like is the old keyboard cover used to snap onto the bottom mm -hmm. on those pogo pins, and now it's all based on the back of the folio on the device and magnets. And as the Apple device, is that an Apple folio? Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, and it, it you can so, position it. So it looks like, and again, this was kind of my my thought of it. It looks like. There's like it, two positions. It for looks it. more and more like a uh, 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 Microsoft Surface, but the keyboard thing. Oh yeah, a little bit. Um, like it look, it feels like it's it's kind of relatable. Yeah, I would say it's definitely relatable. Mm -hmm. um, As you have, it's not that much. Actually, on the 11 inch, the screen's not that much smaller than an than a than a Surface. Yeah. Um, but it, which Surface is that for people visually? Uh, referencing? This is the Surface Pro Four. Pro 4, and that's like a 11-inch, 13-inch? I'm guessing it's around 11. Okay. Um, where I think the pr both devices really have their strengths is with the screen resolution. Mm -hmm. um, having a HD display or uh, above. Alex Carr is in the chat room, our friend on the West Coast there in LA area. Um, he's, he's asking. So what's your current iPad? What's, oh, okay. He well, says, should I trade my current iPad for the new iPad Pro? Uh, my, guess, my guess is he got last year's, maybe. I don't know. The last year's iPad Pro or last year the, the 300 We'll wait for him to answer. Um, yeah. So we're, like, I, like, we're, I can't imagine if I have like the, the big iPad Pro like last year. Or not, was not, is it last year? Did they do one yours last year? Yours is two. Yeah, they did, they did one last year, but yours is the Gen 1 iPad. Yeah. Like if I have a Gen 1 iPad, is it worth it to upgrade? I guess so it depends they went the, on what They you had do. the 9.7 with the... They're the two, so this is the third pro generation. Mm -hmm. uh, he says he has the iPad that works with the pencil. That's like the you have the you have the spring release. <laughs> you have the iPad 2018. No, that's this yeah, year. Yeah, last year's. Yeah, last year's. <laughs> he says, but that la the, this year like mm -hmm. was released in like March, April. So yeah, okay, so let's just go with this. Let's pretend you have, and he's a graphic designer. Yeah, and that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go with it. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend you have this Springs, which is the iPad non Pro. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's forgetting his time. Um, so the if you had this year's, so where where you're lacking is the pogo pins for the keyboard. And the um, ProMotion display. If you're doing any video work, 
or you notice like jitter when you scroll if that's something that's important to you mm-hmm. i would highly recommend the device and there are trade-in options so it's not like you're gonna be pulling the full brunt of that price right on that i mean we're, but i mean keep in mind that but there's a big but keep in mind that the device he has only retailed at 329 okay and these devices start at like 800 <laughs> so oh. a used a, a used are you repla- are you also replacing a small <laughs> laptop and the fact that he can't carry forward his pencil yeah so that's where i think you get into like this i view the ipad as like a 3 year commitment yeah minimum yeah um so i would hang on to that device um for yeah, at least another more. year or cuz it's only 6 months old right yeah, now yeah 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 no no um, if you if you bought the thing 6 months ago and unless there's a killer feature and you got the budget no don't buy the new yeah, thing the, um the face id on it is extremely extremely nice mm-hmm. um i've become very spoiled with face id and even using them an emojis and all that kind of fun stuff so i just wanted that seamless experience across my devices mm-hmm. um i don't know it, it, and it, even if you were going to go even if you were going to try to talk yourself into well i could do more design and more video i would say then bump up to the the bigger 12 point whatever inch mm-hmm. and then you're talking another you're just talking more money more money more money um mo money mo ipod <laughs> yeah so uh, <laughs> I, I would hang on to that device for at least a little while longer uh, speaking of money you have a discount attached to this awesome thing this week as yeah, well. so the interesting thing that i learned this week this week is if you go into the apple store one of the questions that they asked me this time was hey who do you work for um who do you work for and i'll tell you what who i work for got me a decent discount ah big bank international the brand brand spanking new device nice all all the accessories were discounted all Mm -hmm. the device like the the uh, the other thing that that i find interesting is i miss my lightning port for right now really only because I only have so many USB-C cables, but mm-hmm. I have lightning cables everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can sell you a bunch of 30 pins too. <laughs> I have some 30 pin. I don't have any 30 pin devices laying around, but I still have some 30 oh, pin cables I laying do. around. Um, but the one thing I, I also posted in the show notes is on top of this is, and I'm going to butcher the, the pronunciation of this. Satechi. 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 Sure. Satechi has already released well wow that looks cool pre-released um their USB-C hub for the ipad pro so if you're missing the headphone jack or you want a usb port or oh, they did take it what's that yeah the iphone the uh, headphone jack yeah or an hdmi cable um an additional USB-C. I mean micro sd and micro sd um for and it's going to retail for i think a hundred bucks yeah um 99 dollars. i think it is um if you pre-order right now and when i pre-ordered i didn't even have to pay for it they just said hey give us your email address and we'll give you the discount code when it comes out if you order right away um for it's a it's a hub for 45 bucks and when you think about before people start going a hub for 45 bucks, that's ridiculous. When you think about it, if you typically purchase the camera kit, that's like 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. If you do the, the display kit with like the HDMI or VGA, that's 30 bucks. This is not bad for <laughs> an Apple device. <laughs> if you, in, in Apple dongle land. In, in Apple dongle land, this is a deal. Um, not to mention if you, if you're really into your headphone jack, um, this brings that back. Uh, th- I wish they, w- I, I thought it would have been interesting if they actually added an ethernet jack to that. I thought it would be pretty cool because oddly enough, I actually, we've, we've shown the dongle connection, not the rainbow connection, but the dongle connection. <laughs> um, 
you can I, I actually use Ethernet with my iPad more than I'd like to admit. Mm -hmm. So and we've talked about that before. Yeah, about that that it's special case that you have going yes. on there. So so I thought this device was pretty cool, and it just shows the power of the device, but also obviously people are are hungry for this type of thing. They're not going to create this if there's no demand. Um, so I thought it was it was pretty darn cool. Awesome. I'm about to check that out. Well, I got something else for you guys to check out that we haven't talked about on this show before. Hey, some people like technology and they like sports. That sports ball. The sports puck. The sports ball? The sports ball puck. Yes. With and, racing. With racing ball puck. Yes. <laughs> yes. Vroom, vroom. Um, <laughs> so we want to give a shout out to our good friends here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. They are Bold Pittsburgh Sports. Our buddies over there uh, are, are, are talking to Steelers. They're talking to Penguins. They're kind of talking to Pirates. And if you want the uh, boldest and rawest looks of uh, sports in Pittsburgh, Bold Sports gives you all things Steelers, Pens, and Buckos. Find out more at boldpgh.com. Of course, there's a lot of great Pittsburgh things going on over at boldpgh.com. Uh, these guys have been going. Jeez, oh, I can't believe how long they've been going. I didn't realize. Like, I went and looked again. And they were, they're up to, like, 53 episodes. Wow. Uh, these guys uh, uh, love their sports and love talking about their sports. And I know you guys have been out there listening to them as well. If you haven't, you want some good sports talk. You want to fill that podcast queue, go check out Bold Pittsburgh Sports over at boldpgh.com. And also as part of the Sorgatron Media Master Feed, if you haven't subscribed that on your favorite podcast provider. Thanks to them for being on the network and uh, hanging with us awesome casters. All right, Chilla. First of all, I got a local focus here for you. Uh, we, <laughs> I know it's probably a little weird. I, I think it's awesome that we, Pittsburgh, did not get the Amazon HQ2. Yeah, our, our we didn't get it. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. Yeah, all of our all of our housing costs didn't go up by like twenty percent. Yay! <laughs> my taxes, well, they're still going up, but let's be honest, they would have gone up a whole bunch more. Um, but no, I so I this was, you know, I I had been part of um a lot some discussions, uh, streaming some events where there were panels talking about the, uh, the way the city was handling it, um, you know, things like that. So there's a lot of like kind of cultural things and governmental city things that came under fire along with us about how it's you know what are cities giving up to get something new and shiny like this right you know under the veil of it'll bring some money to the place it was like yes but what else does that do so um there actually was a really good comment here i want to bring up that was a, a part of the, the the article that i i'm citing is the next pittsburgh article and there was a very specific like usually you get like the the digest of everything um from next pittsburgh.com um but they the one comment in here i thought was interesting um one of the the quote them uh, one of the wisest observations came from pittsburgh technology council ceo Audrey Russo, um, who points out that the city's nationwide approach to the Amazon bidding process the same way most people engage with large tech platforms on a personal level, uh, heedlessly giving away private data with little thought towards how it may be monetized. And it's part of a bigger... <laughs> Chilla, are your, are your tech podcasts becoming a little <clears throat> too serious for you these days like yeah. mine are? <laughs> no, because it's, it's interesting because it's something that... This is a long. This is a big discussion that's been happening. It's a big discussion, and I think it need those types of discussions need to start in the tech area because my mom, dad, whomever, sister mm -hmm. aren't aren't going to think about these things, right? And I think it's up to us to inject these types of topics into those conversations. We're, we to are get them thinking. We are the tech thinkers, yes, right? Well, and, and, and the things that that's now enveloping everybody's life. And they're just getting started, whereas we've been looking at this for the last 20 years. Yes. So I, I think it's up to us to help inform. Now, in, in this case, you know, you know that, that, that is the idea. Again, I think it was like the, the hey, so it sounds like our, our cities like gave up a lot of data to Amazon to help them. Hey, guys, please come here. Everything from wacky, we're going to make you cupcakes videos to I don't know what else we, we saw. You know, I mean, when Google Fiber was coming in, you know, somebody renamed our city, right? 
um, you know, trying to get their attention. And, you know, I, I think this is something to consider with this. You know, maybe it's nice that we have Google here and everything. It's what it's what made it part of the city re shinied, right? Um, but there's a lot of other things that go with it. And it's just a kind of thing to just kind of pause for a moment and kind of take notice, I think. is, And that's all I want you guys to do is just, you know, take a second and be like, oh, okay, not so bad, not so bad. And just look at some of the conversations. I don't agree with all the negative um, points that were being made against this personally, but there were a lot of really like, yeah, okay, we should think about that at least a little bit more than, yeah, definitely this should happen, right? So yeah, the, the other thing, thing that is I... I, I like what Audrey says about like her reasons of why she thinks that it was uh, what the issues were mm-hmm. from a from a just a Pittsburgh point of view. But talking about aging infrastructure, critical flight routes, mm-hmm. um, it, it's interesting because I think it gives us something. Not that we need to strive for the next the next HQ of whatever other big behemoth technology company but i think it helps us it helps ground us and set a path forward to what we need to work on as as a city Ooh, well Um, said which i which i think is good right yeah um pittsburgh could definitely use to update especially its transportation infrastructure Mm -hmm. um and i i think the port authority tries to tries to do what they can but we're leaps and bounds behind Uh, at least my experience uh, you know again did another piece with the um the the newest head of the port authority like she seems like she's got a better head on our shoulders than Mm -hmm. uh once previously for instance but um no you know we're moving forward and i think there's a lot of interesting data points um i i think in most cases there's a lot of data technology that's being applied in the city since our, our you know current um regime uh came into the office um but you know so but you know not everything is going to be perfect but let's bring it back around and get a little more interesting <laughs> um riz wanted to point out that uh bobby f j town's favorite gaming marathon for charity is back guys it's Desert Bus for Hope 2018, uh, raising money for child's play. This is, um, if you're not familiar, it's it's down on the lower corner here. Let me see if I can zoom in. That's the game right there. Oh, your driver is Stan Lee. That's so nice. So this is a Sega CD game. This is an unreleased Sega CD game that was a one mini game, <laughs> mini, as part of um, uh, Penn and Teller's uh, 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 video game release out that never saw the light of day. And the idea is that in real time, you're driving a tour bus from, was it Albuquerque to Las Vegas, I believe? Something insane like that. And uh, it, it's real time. Whatever, how, like it takes like, what, two and a half hours to make the trip like in, <laughs> in real life? That's the game. And to add a level of difficulty, um, your, your alignment is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> and you shift off the road. So you, you can't just sit there. You need to steer yourself back onto the road every once in a while, too. So this is a thing. And they do this for, I don't think, 24 hours or something, this one group over here. Uh, this is the uh, Desert Bus channel over on Twitch. So um, it's, <laughs> I love it. It's the 12th annual Desert Bus for Hope. They're using an emulator or something, I'm sure, in this um, to, to make this work. But uh, I, I love that this is a thing. And it's just one of those weird, quirky video game deals, you know, that, that, that people do. And it's cool. And they've raised uh, $31,000. They're, oh, they're at our, is that right? Our 102 <laughs> so far. Whew. Oof. Oh, and when you beat the game and get to the, your destination, um, then there is an extra game of you driving back to your I was version say, point. Yes. Can you, can you, yes. Do you get to go back? Yep, you get to go back. Yep. Yep. Um, it it seems like a collection of games to, to just to like be cruel to your friends. <laughs> well, I, see, I, I, I'm sure when they created it, they were like, no one's ever going to play this, but we can just throw it on here. <laughs> exactly. And now it's become. Like, I'm sure thing. there was like other stuff that was like, like this is going to be the reason you buy this thing. And then we had this thing called Desert Bus. And it was like, oh, this is what this is. And then some crazy person is going to do something. But that's before the internet had video. So, you know. Jeez. Um, 
Sorry, I'm distracted by uh, Desert Bus at this point. So there was a couple of things, uh, a couple more things submitted here, and these are all from our Awesome Cast Facebook group. You guys can join over there and be part of that. Um, there was some notes. Brian Craw- Crawford, our friend at the River's Edge, uh, again, I got to hang out with him at the uh, Pittsburgh Podcasters co- uh, Coffee at uh, Mr. Small's Cafe. Definitely recommend it. I can't remember if we had to hit record before I started talking about it, so I'm going to say it again. Um, he switched platforms. Again. Again? Again. Yeah. He is back, baby. <laughs> back to the iOS platform. Um, and he has some initial thoughts. And I'll, I'll just skim over these real quick. One, I noticed... Well, well maybe these are, these are in here. So, uh, uh, since he moved um, to the XS Max. So he went he, he went go big or go home on this one. Uh, he went as big as possible. Oh, yes, he did. Positive. It works. <laughs> So many Android devices are littered with glitches due to the wide variety of products. The thing is so smooth and extremely quick. Uh, Negative, this is a big one. The battery life in comparison to my Note 8 is awful. And he had a recent and flagship phone with with the Note 8, right? Yeah, and and I I actually commented back on this. Mm -hmm. I must have gotten a dud battery in my Note 8 because I can literally take my Note and sit it on a shelf and not use it all day and if it starts at 100 percent battery life at 6 30 a.m it's pretty much at like 10 percent by like 9 p.m wow and that's not do- i did not do so there's any- no rest like there's no rest mode in it right like Yes, Facebook notifications and Instagram, all those notifications right. are coming in. Right, but, but I never, I never activate the screen and and do anything. Right, and it's it's there. Um, I, I use my phone a ridiculous I, amount, and today, for example, um, it would have been brought off charge at six twenty. 5 a.m. and it's 7:50 and I'm at 61 mm-hmm. percent and I consider myself now the one thing I will say is and this is people think I'm crazy but it's, maybe it's just my eyes I don't like my brightness turned up very mm-hmm. high because it mm-hmm. actually hurts my eyes that mm-hmm. bright white mm-hmm. light um, so I would say my brightness is at like 30 40 percent I have mine do auto on the, on the bar I have mine auto Okay. do it so like throughout the day like to the point where if i go to watch a video and i was like oh i need to crank this up so i can see because i usually watch like dark programs so mm-hmm. um I, but, th- but i'm at 61 percent, and i i won't be i mean i can i'm typically at like 40 percent by mm-hmm. bedtime at midnight i feel like it, we should just copy and paste this into an amazon review um <laughs> it says an hour positive the waff loves this thing it's a piece of art uh would like it if it was more look looked like a watch but i love it comfortable works very well sings so seamlessly uh, one criticism is it, it doesn't have an active app within the watch for tune in radio. Ooh, yeah, it's it's kind of like there is one in there. No, there's a tune in app, but it, yeah, it, it's not. Yeah, you can't like listen usually from the, the the watch itself. It's more just a control for your phone. So, wait, what? I missed that. What's the so his his one criticism is it doesn't have a, an active app within the watch for tune in radio. Oh, uh, I'm not familiar with TuneIn Radio. It's, it's, I mean, it's it's a streaming. It's what okay. River's Edge just carried Spotify on. just added today, I think. Mm. Or, or this And also, week. I haven't gone back and, like, checked in on stuff. Um, you know, see, like, what it, what it has a new app or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's like like my bank bounce, I think, is in here now. But it, then it doesn't seem to load. Uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't know. It just doesn't. It's It's like the stuff is there, but it isn't. In, in a lot of cases. Well, I think what, so with the new requirements and them requiring the app to not require the phone app pieces, I think that's going to get better over time. I think they they used the whole we'll run everything off of the phone as a crutch, and mm-hmm. now they're trying to force everyone to just run full-fledged off the, the watch itself. Um, so. Otherwise, he's really impressed with uh, face recognition, way better than the retina. Uh, he says he was talking with me this weekend about how seamless it is, and another positive is the phone camera. He didn't think could get any better than the Note 8, but it's completely wrong. And he says he'll drop more thoughts. And of course, you guys are, are already part of a great conversation over there in the group too, including Chilla uh, being part of that. So, um, but no, I mean it's kind of cool to see uh, see that that conversion. Um, the 
the um, Clips app. I keep forgetting Clips is on my phone to play with a little bit, right? I And I feel the same way. I wish I thought about it more often mm -hmm. to pull that out instead of just even the regular camera video app. I really want to spend time with you, Clips. <laughs> Clippy? No, Clips. <laughs> but... Um, uh, it, you know, stuff from selfie scans. There's some AR, new AR stuff. Or your AR, excuse me. Some new AR stuff that that uh, is involved in there. I'm um, using uh, selfie scenes. Use the neural engine on the A12 Bionic chip for high quality portrait segmentation during preview. Jeez, new filters. Um, eight expressive stickers. Uh, it, it's uh, do 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 do. David Dave Podner of Tiny Shutter Podcast is saying that. Uh, yeah, it says about AR front-facing additions are a part of this as well. And also, 17 new royalty-free soundtracks. Hmm. Got to look into that. So, so that, so, so go get your clips updated. See what new features are popping up there as well. Uh, Dave says they're worthwhile. And uh, that is all uh, from our group for this week that we had uh, picked out here. Again, join the Awesome Cast Facebook group. You can be part of that conversation and, and help Brian out. Uh, talk with Brian about uh, his new iPhone experiences, too. Hey, guys, you know, we, we, we try to have a lot of energy here. It's a Tuesday afternoon. All of us have been working all day. And you know why we do that? You know how we do that? Because our good friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza with four locations in Beachview, Carnegie, West End, and the PNC Park location. I just, uh, I, you know, my travels, I end up, I end up uh, passing most of those locations and, uh, and, uh, and it brings a smile every time I do get to pass and say, hey, there's our friends that support the show, uh, of course. And uh, always good at treating the show really well and uh, the best pizza verified by several publications i think at this point uh go check them out sliceonbroadway.com you can win pizza for a year you can win pizza for a year where's that at i just oh text slice the three nine one eight seven text slice to three three nine one eight am i eligible i nobody has told me not so go for it we'll three, see three nine one i'd love if you won this thing They'll love it because you're already getting free pizza on Tuesdays. I'll let you know if I win. There you go. Chilla. Chilla's going to experiment for us. Go check them out. Thank you, thank you to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Uh, and tell them that the awesome cast sent you. All right. Uh, Chilla, what is, what is the good news to talk about this week? Yeah, so what did you... So And I noticed you... Oh, I just... Uh oh, did you just get some text back? No, I'm good. Um, what What did you think about the Samsung foldable Infinity Flex? I haven't looked a whole bunch at this. And, and have they released the form factor yet? Is it still in the dark? And we have this like glowy device in the dark that we're not allowed to show you because of reasons. Yeah, I, th I think they they had almost like the they used to do with the iPhones, where it's like in some kind of additional case to keep you from seeing so seeing the rest of it. The yeah, the rest of it. Yeah um curious so in so i mean i want to make sure i describe this appropriately because i've listened to so many podcasts only seen the video a couple times and it's i'm still wrapping my head around it you know like a photoable screen <laughs> um <laughs> but so it's actually two screens there's like a front one that makes it look like a phone but then it opens then up there's the to inside. another screen like an inside screen yeah that is gonna be expensive i heard i heard Starting price like eighteen hundred bucks. I am not surprised <laughs> by any of that because it's a tablet and a phone. Yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> it's a lot of technology. Now and it's foldable. And it's foldable. I mean, this is the same company that started making like, hey, we figured out how to do edge glass, and we're just gonna put like random stuff and more icons in that edge glass. You know, with the with the uh, S seven edge. I, but notice they didn't keep doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that was nice, and it looked cool. It looked really, like a really good phone. Uh, I have friends that had them. You had one, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, okay, that's now they don't sell a phone without it. What? Oh, really? I don't think you can get a regular non-edge device. Okay, anymore. so this is okay. It is. It is part of all these. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of your phones going to be foldable in the future if this works out. What's interesting is Microsoft's been. There's been information 
showing that Microsoft's working on the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But theirs was more of like the old school palm top type thing. It wasn't going to be a screen on both sides of the device with it being foldable. It was going to be more like the Westworld pocket PC type thing. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen like that where they fold out? And it, yeah. Um, it was kind of clear and everything, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know theirs wasn't clear. It looked like a folio type thing. But Okay. Um, it was a phone. It was a... It was an internet communicator. It was an MP3 player. It was everything. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, but they were working on that foldable device, and I, it seemed like they were stuck on the glass. So it'll be interesting to see, A, is Samsung the only one? Because then immediately, was it immediately after or right around the same time Samsung was giving their presentation, um, Google announced reference designs for foldable Mm -hmm. Android. So this is becoming um, this is becoming a pretty serious thing. Yeah. So I'm guessing we're going to see this pop up. This this is everywhere. Their, Samsung just wants you to know that you're they're the first to show you to a little bit, right? So which makes me think like with all that happening, I may, I bet there is a little bit they're kind of tied into and mm -hmm. couldn't show, right? So or like this is man they they press evented a prototype. Why not? I, I'm sure I'm guessing that thing's going to be out before you before we think it is yeah maybe but, but i'm still. guessing it's a spring here's the thing though it's a spring you think it's just i'm like, guessing it's like all this new technology but we put a spring in there no i mean i'm guessing it's in the sp spring oh, oh we're oh. like you're only you're le you're less than a year out yeah yeah um all right so i don't know i, I thought it was a really i where i thought about it was wouldn't this be cool if like when you think about like the nintendo ds and things like that Mm -hmm. having that play into this um the other thing is, is obviously it's going to drive it'll, i'm guessing it'll drive the price of existing pan normal panels down um which is always good so 7-eleven um apparently is upping their um innovation quota <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you noticed the, the, all the uh, billboards around at least the Pittsburgh area, and I don't know if this is everywhere. Uh, I, I can't imagine it being everywhere. Um, but uh, you can now deliver 7-Eleven. And I love the campaign. It's basically uh, get over your hangover, or what hangover, I think it says. And, you know, 7-Eleven now delivers. <laughs> so What are they doing? Just Slurpees? What are they doing? Uh, Slurpee and a hot dog. convenience store items. You want Doritos and Gatorade. And I mean, this is for if you got the hangover the next morning or you got the munchies tonight. This is what this is for. And they know their audience and they're completely going. It's a whole other app. I have not tried this. But the point is, this is not this is not all. Also, I know there's like a sheet style like card that gives you points down discounts mm -hmm. that uh, my wife signed me up to for. Uh, so, so those, they're trying to they're trying to catch up with a lot of these things. Are, are they using Lyft? Do you know who they're using? I don't know. That's the other question. Like who who's doing this? It can't be just like okay, we have drivers for Seven Eleven. Like. I, does that work? Does that scale? I don't know. Maybe they're Can't just teaming scale. with maybe they're just teaming with Grubhub or something. Mm, I have a less than awesome thing I'll share after the show too. But speaking of it, because I, I I figure it out how some things on Grubhub work and and in certain cases do not use Grubhub. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like 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 for Gecko or Wawa. Do not use Gecko for that. That's just not a good idea. Um, but the point is, 7-Eleven is testing a scan-and-go mobile checkout system. So you use your phone, you use something like Apple Pay on there, you scan your items in the store with your phone, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is going to be available originally in 14 Dallas stores, and we'll expand to more cities in 2019. Uh, the idea is you scan it, and then it gives you a big QR code, and then there's going to be a confirmation station on your way out the door. So it's not like the Apple store where you scan your thing, pay on your phone, and walk out like you, like, like you own it. It's like a bag checker. like <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Like it's still a – but instead of, instead, of, instead of you like taking the thing to a person that scans each individual I item, you did – you did their job. You did their job. By the way, I just got a, I just got an email. I just got a text message from producer Missy, um, and uh, just says guac is magical. Okay, I'm jealous of your Taco Tuesday. Anyways, uh, but no, yeah. So, 
So we don't necessarily trust the 7-Eleven people like we do the Apple Store people, apparently. Um, it's interesting. I, this um, lends to the self-checkout thing, and sometimes the self-checkout feels a little um, weird to me. Have you seen the self-checkouts at Gecko's? I have not. If you go to a gecko, look for them because you probably—it's probably been there and you haven't noticed if you—if you frequent any geckos in your travels. Um, but you have one. And you go to go to go to the you know where, where you're supposed to check out where there's actually like friendly people. Okay, where there's people uh, to check out your your food items or whatever, right? And then look look to the right or left there. You may see a screen and maybe a little sign that says self checkout. And as you'll see a little screen and you see a little receipt machine. And you see uh, uh, one of the scanner guns. Not like the nice big kiosk like you get at Walmart. Like, it's to the point where I look at this thing and I'm just like, wait, did I just get hired? <laughs> That's interesting. It, I, yeah. Uh, it's the most unfriendly looking thing, but I feel like I'm the only one that notices it and I get to skip the line. Well, that's good. The <laughs> thing that I'm surprised is like Sheets doesn't do it. Like, why I can't the Gecko is a regional thing owned by Giant Eagle? Is kind of like Sheets, and, and but, they're doing their thing. But why For can't I do? Not in Pittsburgh. Why can't I do self checkout at Sheets in at the MTO screen? Mm-hmm. Like to me, that's the most obvious place where if you're gonna let me, I would not be out, surprised. Wait for it. Wait for it. There was a great interview. Um, one of the Sheets brothers uh, was on the Gary Vaynerchuk podcast this week. I'm sure it was like an Ask Gary Veer pod session or something, right? Um, but they talked about how they innovated up to this point and how they're looking. They spent, you know, the Sheets, the, the Sheets people were hanging out at CMU for three days. No, just looking at technology and possibilities and see what they could apply in the future. They are forward thinking. Mm-hmm. Right, you're seeing this. I mean, that app. Like, it took a while to get to the app and the online ordering, but it is there and it is good. Right? Um, they are. <laughs> there are Tesla chargers in Hermitage. Oh, that's the only place I've seen these. There are Tesla chargers at the Sheets gas station in Hermitage, PA. Not here in Pittsburgh. I have not seen one yet anywhere else. I'm guessing that's because of its location. Like you're in because you can only get so far in a Tesla <laughs> to recharge. <laughs> and if you're in There's Pittsburgh, or Philly, now it is it is down the road. It is down the road from a technology innovation center. Okay, so I mean, there, uh, Hermitage is one of those towns, and, and we've interviewed um, um, some people that I think aren't even there anymore. Like they're trying to con- like Pittsburgh convert from a manufacturing town to a technology manufacturing town of sorts, right? Like like coming mm-hmm. to the 21st century. So, I mean, there's stuff there. Um, <laughs> Alex says that Sheets people were trying to figure out how to enroll at CMU. No, that's not how it works. They're doing very well. Uh, but uh, but no, but but I... I that was an interesting. It was so it was an interesting discussion, and 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 I love the gas station technology battles that are happening now, a little bit. So, but it's all regional too. So, I don't know. All right, let's see what else we got in here before we roll out. Actually, let me give a shout out while we're at it, since uh, since he's in the chat room, and you know we'll we'll go ahead and get this in here because I well, we're we're heading towards the end of the show here. I uh, want to give our a shout out to our friend Alexander Cars, AlexCars.media. That's K A H R S dot media or AlexanderCars.com. He's putting together a puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check out AlexanderCars.com and AlexCars.media to get started, and uh, he'll help you with your project. No matter where you are in the country. He's a West Coast friend, but he's worked on a few projects with us here around Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Media Services. And uh, I think I just recommended him for another project here in the area, too. So, um, yes, please help me help you, he says in the chat room. Uh, so, go check it out. AlexCars.media. See, see, if you're on video, now everybody knows how to spell your name with that banner that we got going on. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of a slight upgrades this week. And we'll see how they roll from there. So, um, from that, uh, let's chat for a moment about, I know I had one or two, I went, Niantic, we know about it. We were talking about Pokemon Go social things, uh, before, before the show here, uh, Chill and I, and, uh, you know, some may know, and I think they're doing the new Harry Potter game, 
I believe. I've, I heard about that. We talked about the Ghostbusters game not too long ago. It's not by Niantic, Niantic but no, it's not. No, 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 it's, no. It's, it's the same premise. Well, they are sort of, uh, their original concept that basically Pokemon is built on is Ingress, right? Um, kind of an interesting concept, right? Uh, a little bit of like revolution kind of thing going on there. Well, they're going to revive it. And again, this article here in Engadget is saying for the post Pokemon Go world, uh, it, it's it's coming back as Ingress Prime as a reboot sequel to help new gamers get into it. And on top of that, and this is where I got kind of excited about it. Um, not only are they going to reboot this thing and, and kind of make it a little more interesting, and they do have a very ARE kind of um, promo for this. And, and again, it's it's bases, and you're on a team. You know, you can think of the bases, and you know, going from uh, blue to green, just like your uh, Pokemon gems. But also on top of that, they have an anime that will be coming to Netflix very soon. So if you want to see the uh, background here on Ingress, the animation. Uh, it looks pretty cool, and I'm kind of excited. I, I mean, I'm an anime, anime fan to begin with, uh, here and there. So, uh, it's because I mean, again, like Ingress just seems so um, existential when I played it, it. It was that, and it was like the UI was like something yeah. out of like the Matrix. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. It really felt like that, right? So it's uh, this. This will help. Okay, hopefully, like nobody's coming at me with a gun, like in this uh, in this uh, preview that they're giving you. And it's that like anime kind of three D effect that um, uh, I well, the, the dragon dragon prince that I've been watching on Netflix has this kind of thing going on. Um, so no, it looks really good. It looks really fun uh, as far as animes go and stuff. So uh, it can give you a little bit of oh, that's what I'm doing when I'm poking at those shapes in that game kind of idea to it so go check it out keep an eye for an ingress and ingress prime and ingress the the, uh animation coming soon to phones and netflix i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to reinstall ingress and give it another give it another try do you want to be a rocket man do i want to be a rocket man do you want to be a rocket man and fly around the world or uh of sorts so this is this was a um this is a movie that they're putting out called Loft the Jetman Story. There's an official teaser here uh, that we that we have linked. And uh, I didn't put the original article in the, uh, in, the, in the thing by accident. But the idea is um, the, these are jet-powered backpacks. Like you're basically um, – let me get further in the video here so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, this is something that they're, they're, they're putting together a feature film on this, like a documentary film on this, but they have something that kind of the, the, a, a clip here, teaser clip here that, um, kind of shows you how serious this is as far as like your reaction time and everything. Um, but it is a real jet pack wing thing <laughs> that you, Do you can take wear. off from. Um, they show here, so there, it's an elevated platform that okay. you can take off from. Let me see. Or some, the side of a helicopter. Uh, or side of a helicopter, apparently. I love that it's plenty of slow-mo shots here. There's a little bit of close-up of the turbines and everything. Um, and it looks like that is the, uh, that looks like that's the platform they're building there for this. And they talk about a little bit of like how important it is. Here he is uh, jumping off the platform and going basically straight out-ish. With his well, you know, what? I bet they, he doesn't like take off from there. Like he probably glides for a bit too. That's amazing. Yeah, that's high up. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, they're basically they're in the is it the Alps? I believe it was in here. Hold on, I got it on my notes here. I would be nervous, like, of getting overzealous and consuming all my fuel and then not being able to really land. Well, these are, these, these are people. Um, let's see. I grabbed this one section out of here. Uh, it says that the trio, the trio in this film uh, show a formation of flying through the, the fjords of Norway. Uh, they say it, and this I believe was uh, via Engadget. Uh, it, it demonstrates the extreme risk. If something goes wrong, you have to react fast. Uh, they say um, along with some of the pretty incredible high speed, high speed visuals, uh, you also get to see the first time the team has launched from a ground-based platform, uh, a high ramp in the mountains rather than helicopters or planes they usually use. Okay. So it was a little bit of everything there. So, th- and again, I, I imagine these are, these are people that already fly jets. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not this is 
you know, they're doing the same thing, but with less hardware, <laughs> you know, less wrapped around them at this point. So, uh, it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry, I just know some stuff in the chat room. Um, so with that, I think that wraps us up for the date, Chilla. That is the uh, the awesome stories I think are worth awesomeing about. I gotta I w- work on that outro. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> But uh, let me think. Is there anything else going on? We got Pittsburgh Current. Uh, we just announced a guest over there. I know we just put the group up. Uh, I'm sorry, the event page up with our friends at Pittsburgh Current on the uh, Facebook page. We'll be live streaming at 10 a.m. Eastern time here on Thursday. We will be doing, uh, let's see, nothing tomorrow is streaming. And, uh, and I think that's it for this week. We're looking to do, get this. Uh, putting the final details together, we might be doing a Turkey Bowl Mario Kart tournament Ooh. on Thanksgiving Eve. On Thanksgiving Eve? On Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, keep me posted on that one. Keep me and, posted and on that. I think we should assign homework to, to, those of, to those of you who read the Facebook page. I'd like to see for next Tuesday what people's favorite Black Friday deals are in honor of Thanksgiving. I Okay, and also start thinking about what you're thankful for in technology because we <laughs> usually do that instead of awesome thing of the week. Ah, that's, that's a mm-hmm. good one too. I had an idea. I'll share this here since we're at the back of the book on this. Um, I had an idea for, for uh, if, if I'm driving Lyft over on Thanksgiving weekend, I want to take like a jar and I'm going to have some Post-it notes. And I'm going to ask people to write what they're thankful for, not honestly, honestly, right? I mean, I'm not like I'm going to have anything but their first name, right? And I probably won't even keep that. And I, I kind of want to do a little bit of a social experiment video, you know, something with it, like mm-hmm. with social media. Cool. So, I'm, I'm, but I, I, I think that'd be kind of a fun thing to do while I'm out and about because I'm like, you know, what am I going to do? Put Thanksgiving lights up? <laughs> so. <laughs> We'll see. So if I'm out and about the Thanksgiving weekend and Black Friday, and also I'm hoping it serves as a little bit of reminder to kind of uh, step back a little bit when you're trying to get that great deal and hit Granny with a uh, shopping cart. <laughs> Listen, man, we've all Very been true. there. But, uh, you know, they take it a little easy there on the Thanksgiving weekend. So so go check that out. Oh, Doug's down for the Mario Kart. Oh, it, I, did, I did also mention the Mario Kart is, uh, tournament is being put together by our wrestling friends. So... If you want to come play Mario Kart with some pro wrestlers, let us know, and uh, we'll get you looped in there. We'll be sharing the event as soon as it gets uh, lined up here. So, uh, wait, wait, ch- wait, chilla. Wait, 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 wait. Did you have secret pizza this whole time? Yeah, I was waiting till like I could not <laughs> munch. I could munch without uh, messing up the mic. Oh. I love this and munch time. Thank you, chilla at chilla on the Twitter, chillatech.net. That's me in the pizza. <laughs> At Sorgatron on the Twitter. Thank you so much to our chat roomers, Doug and Alex and uh, uh, Dave and uh, Billy Johnson I saw was in there for a little bit. Uh, Thank you. You guys have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.